Welcome to the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel. I'm Ed Halinski, another great guest we have today. You've known him from the Tonawanda News. You know him from his comedy. He's quite, quite the media personality with quite the amount of good opinions on different things. The one and the only Ernie Green. Good to catch up with you, my friend. How's things in uh, Arizona? But what I understand, you're back in the 716. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I live in Arizona, but currently in the 716, and things are great. I've I've seen a lot of people and caught up with a lot of cool people from the area, and it's been awesome. So thanks for having me. And you've been eating a lot of cool food as well, too. You know, pizza and uh, probably some chicken wings and uh, maybe a little mighty taco on top of it. That's pretty much literally all I've eaten in the two and a half days I've been here. Chicken, chicken wings, mighty taco, and pizza. So. I want to get right to it with you, my friend. Give us a timeline for the people who are not familiar with you, uh, your writing career in Western New York. So I started um, So I started in, in 1997, right out of high school. So funny story, because you just had him on. Uh, Pat Murray ended up being the sports editor. And before that, when I was in high school, Pat covered the North Tonawana beat on the news side for the Tonawana News. And I was the student council president and he wanted to talk to my dad being on the school board. So he would call my house frequently and um, he'd just call me up and, and we'd end up talking. We're big sports fans and my father wasn't there. So we'd ha hang out. And there was one edition of the Tonawana News where there was like 13 errors in the sports page. No joke. And a sports page is like three, four pages. It's really difficult to make that many errors. And me being a stupid 17 year old kid, I said to Pat, I go, Pat, I think I can do a better job than that, to be honest with you. And, you know, that saying that, looking back, I can't believe how stupid I was. But um, that summer, he got the sports editor job. And he called me up and he said, hey, Ernie, you remember when you said you could do a better job? Well, I got an opportunity for you. So I was a stringer from 97 until 2001. And then I was full time from 2001 to 2004. What do you remember about those uh the covering North Tonawanda and Tonawanda, the Kenmore schools at that point? Man, you know, at, at the beginning, it was, it was, well, it was really interesting because I was just out of high school. So I wasn't really taken seriously. And looking back, I probably shouldn't have been, you know, so I had some roadblocks there and, you know, I'm trying to do the best job I can, obviously, because this, that was a career that I wanted to go into and I wanted to learn. I wanted to whatnot. It was easier in North Tonawanda because I knew everybody, but um, even in adulthood, people still have like territorial vibes. Like people from North Tonawanda generally don't like people from Tonawanda still. And it's kind of, it's kind of funny because I've gotten to know everybody. I've gotten to know people from Tonawanda and there were so many great people in Tonawanda that were part of the football program there and part of the TNT lore that I've gotten to meet and know and they're great people and the Kenton so, you know, so much. So it was mostly just when you join the journalism business, it's mostly establishing contacts and trust. I had it from the North Tonawana people, knowing them, obviously, but I didn't have that from the other places. And it was just a matter of getting to know people and doing a good job and writing fair and balanced articles. And once that happened, I never really had an issue with anything. But it was a blast, man. It was so cool. Like, I, I was actually a history major at first in, in college. And once I started doing, you know, stringing and sports writing, I'm like, no, this is exactly what I want to do with my life. So to have that revelation, even though I, I'm not really in the business full time anymore, but to have that revelation at that point in my life was really, really cool. How were the North Tonawanda teams back then? So I'm trying to, off the top of my head, so the 97 team made, they, they went to Rich Stadium and they lost to Orchard Park. That was a very, very good team. Uh, Mark Knockreiner was the quarterback. Then you had Aaron Day, who was one of the best running backs I've seen in high school football level, I think. And they were just a really good team. They had really good offensive and defensive lines. And then from like 98 to 2000, they kind of had some lean years. And then Eric Jancy took over in 2000. And during the middle of the season is when he uh, replaced Mike Morano, who was a very good high school quarterback. He replaced him and moved him to wide receiver and put a sophomore named Brandon, Brandon DeShane in there. And, you know, and then the next you – know, and Brandon was okay his sophomore year. But then they went to Indian option camp, started running the flex bone, and that's really where they – they took off 2001. They barely missed the playoffs. And then 2002 was the undefeated season where they went to um, Ralph. They won the section six and they lost to Webster Schroeder in the uh, super regional, I guess they call it when the section five and six teams faced, whatever they call that they lost there. But then, and then 2004 was 2003 was the last full-time year I covered and they went undefeated during the regular season and they got knocked off by Orchard Park in the first round of the playoffs and so not Ralph Wilson stadium, just a, 
they just did every, they did everything possibly wrong they could that game they, and they still barely lost it was just a Murphy's Law game and but I mean once Jancy t- I mean Jancy is the most organized smart human being I've met in pretty much any walk of life so once he took over and you know he they just you know they skyrocketed did you think did you know back then that there was uh magic in the bottle at that point with Eric Jancy and this program was going to succeed for a great number of years the great number a great number of years no but Matt you know having that it was funny because the, the, that 2002 team that won the state and that they won the section, they were loaded. I mean, they had so much. I mean, Brandon DeShane might have been the best player in Western New York, and he he didn't even make all Western New York. And then his brother Nick was a great running back. And then Brian Weech, the late the late Brian Weech, was a great kid. He um, was a great. He he was an all. I mean, he was an all Western New York offensive lineman. Chris Reimer, um, who played defensive end, was all Western New York also. Then Jordan Bunker was a great player a great lineman too. They had so much talent on that team that it was not surprising they made it that far. And it was kind of one of those things. And then when you're looking back in 2002, you're like, is this, is this the beginning of a great program or is this just lightning in a bottle because they have so many talented people, but they just kept churning, churning, churning more talented people. And that really says, you know, that really says, you know, Jancy and what in the program they had and just the kind of, um, you know, the kind of just, you know, camaraderie and, um, commitment they had for the kids to really play, you know, winning football. With such a good NT program, did you find yourself uh, uh, getting going to the line of be, uh, crossing over of being a homer, or could you, how could you get, try to keep it straight while doing your stories? It it was easy because all, all I do is report. All I do is report what happened. So if North Carolina won by fifty points, they won by fifty points, and here's when they won. Here's why they won by by 50 points. So I was never really like a columnist. I never had like an opinionated type vibe. I just reported what happened, you know, whatever happened, happened. And um, obviously because I covered my primary focus was North Tonawana. And I also cover the Kentons and whatnot. I was around them the most and especially, you know, sports sell newspapers. And when you have the best team in Western New York in your jurisdiction, people want to hear about that. So it was, you know, we, we were just turning out North Tonawana football stories day by day. Um, and, but no, it was, it was easy to keep. I mean, they were good. There there really wasn't, you know, there wasn't much else to say, but they were really good and they were really pounding teams. Back at your time, uh, it was right at the beginning of the internet uh, appearing with uh, newspaper websites. Did you feel at that point that, or better yet, what was your feeling at that point? You had the websites, you had the physical newspapers. Was it an exciting time to grow things, or did you feel that things were going to slip away? No. Um, the only issue was, no pun intended, um, the only issue back then was just wondering, figuring out how to navigate between you know, having an online focus and making sure people are paying for it. Because in the early 2000s, it was still a time, people don't realize this, where people were rightfully apprehensive, right, right, rightfully apprehensive about having their credit card online and you think about that now we all have apple pay and everything's done online with our credit card payments but back then it was a legitimate worry so it was just a matter of making sure that we had an online presence but at the same time you know um having you know having the in-person presence because north tonawana is an older more traditional community and they and they love the newspaper they loved you know getting up and reading the newspaper and seeing the pictures and whatnot so it was just a matter of kind of balancing it out. And honestly, I'm not sure newspapers have really figured out the balance to this day. You know, I, it's just, sometimes you they pay for things, sometimes you don't, but I mean, the world's so global now that you can back then, I mean, you can just, you couldn't just wake up and get the New York times. Now I can wake up and read any article from anywhere in the world, you know? So it's just a, a matter of trying to figure out the best way of doing it. And, you know, I, I thought for what, what we had, we did a really, really good job. Looking at looking back at it from today to what it was, what's your thoughts about how high school sports are covered today? Um, well, they're still covered pretty well from, from uh, a bigger standpoint, from a prep standpoint, like the Buffalo Knight, Niagara Gazette, which I'm still affiliated with. They do a great job. Um, they cover their sports, but you know, um, high school papers, smaller papers like the Niagara Gazette, like the Lockport Sun, they're just strung out um, with staff, so they can't, you know. There might be four or five great games in one night. They can only go to one or two with that. So 
Um, they everyone does the best, the very best they can. Um, in terms of Tonawanda and North Tonawanda, they kind of don't have the presence that they used to, unfortunately, because of um, the Tonawanda news being gone. But I think if the Tonawanda news was still there, I think they would get just excellent coverage like they always did right until the very, very end. And um, they're with what the resources the people are doing here, they're doing they're doing an excellent job. And high school sports is a big, you know, it's a, it's a story to tell. And a lot of people are still intertwined in it. And I, I think that um, I it's just a great, great way to get, you know, people's names out and get people involved in the community. You mentioned Tonawanda. What's, what's mm -hmm. your memories of the TNT rivalry during your time? Oh, just great people. Um, just very, very great people on both sides. When I, you know, the, the, when you say TNT, the first per, the first two people that come to mind are two of my, two of my late great friends, Dick Grapes, who was the PA announcer for North Tonawanda for many, many years. And then the late Jason Drewski from Tonawanda. And you won't, you won't meet anybody in the history of ever who had more civic pride than Jason. Jason actually, before he passed, he actually bought a house so he close enough so he could walk to Clinton small stadium. And I would have just loved to hear him complain when they moved over to the high school, because now they played the high school, they don't play Clinton small. So I would have loved just to have that conversation with him. And this is the great people. Uh, Mr. Tonawanda, Chris Lawson, who was probably the most upbeat human being I've ever met, despite, you know, he had a lot of challenges in life and he met them all and he was the most positive human being ever. And the North Tonawanda side, um, so many people were just, there, so many people supported the community on both sides, you know, like the, the, Moran, the Moranos, Keith, I mean, I've never seen a sporting event, whether his kids or his kids, or was, whether his kids were or were not playing, where Keith Morano wasn't there supporting the community and his wife, Nancy, and people like that. And then the coaches, you know, Eric, you know, with, with Jancy and Rick Tom and all those guys and, um, I could I could name a million people on both ends, but it just uh, it was such a positive thing for the community. It was it was one of them. I mean, it still is. I'm guessing, but I'm just not around. But it was just a very very positive event, and everybody was into it. And it really, you know, when I was when I was in high school, like the it it really got cleaned up. When I was in high school, the thing we did during TNT week was like we go out egging, like we go to Tonawanda and like throw eggs at things and. It was really silly, and I can't believe like I'm they never got arrested or anything like that, or my friends. But now I don't think they have it. I think it's 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 a very friendly, more mature rivalry, and I think that's for the better. Do you think that rivalry should uh, continue? I mean, it's been a lopsided uh, series with North Tonawanda having the advantage the last 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. One million percent. Um, number one, it means so much to the community, and number two, athletics is still a business. And I don't think any Tonawanda or North Tonawanda could bring in another team for a non-league game that would bring in the revenue that the other team would. Like, there's no other team that could bring in revenue for Tonawanda like North Tonawanda and vice versa. So if you're trying to make money and you're trying to, you know, have, you know, have the community involved, I don't, I don't see why anybody would um, want to change that. Yeah, the games have been lopsided, but there's been some close games too. And you, you never – and you've never heard um, Tonawanda complain about it. And also remember that Tonawanda was going through a downshift in their program for a couple of years. And now they're, you know, for a lot of times, and then North Tonawanda had um, Eric Jancy and, and those teams like the state title team in 2008, they steamrolled everybody. You know, they, they beat Lancaster like 56, nothing at the stadium for the sectional game. Should they cancel the sectional game? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it was lopsided. No. So I think it's a great rivalry. And as long as, as long as it's still safe for the kids, as long as North Tonawana is not too big where they're hurting the kids, absolutely um, keep the rivalry, 100% without question. What do you remember for some of the uh, TNT storylines that you covered? I mean, it had to have been some sort of uh, different storylines over the years. Um, I know at one time there was a one game that Tonawana did beat North Tonawanda in the TNT game. Yeah, so um, well, one of my favorite just off the record wall stories was the 2001 TNT game, um, and that was like um, still the 2000 was the year that Tonawanda beat him. So Tonawanda uh, started off, they were up 7 nothing. a great touchdown pass, play action. I think it was uh, Muscarella, I think his name was, who caught it. And then North Tonawanda fumbled deep in their territory. And I looked at Dick Grapes, and I'm like, they better, you know, North Tonawanda, North Tonawanda needs to get their, you know, head straight or else this is going to be a route. And sure enough, there's a fourth down play, and Nick Scalise pretty much blew up the Nick. I mean, I'm sorry, Joe Scalise, who was probably the one of the best linemen 
and most prideful lumberjacks of all time. He just completely blew up a play. I think he, they, they tried double teaming him and he plowed through him fourth down, completely stuffed him. They ended up winning like 21, seven or 28, seven. And that's just one of my, and ever since every single time I saw Dick grapes after that, he said, the first thing he said to me was route. Every single time he, he saw me, no matter what, that was the first thing he always said for, he wanted to make sure that I knew that my prediction was terrible and rightfully so. And it wasn't a prediction, but just the momentum and whatnot. So um, the 2002 game was interesting because, you know, the whole thing were like, you got to throw the records out when Tanawana and North Tanawana face each other. And North Tanawana had just beaten Jamestown the week before in a great game. It was one of the better high school football games I've ever seen in North Tanawanda. And people were wondering, is there going to be a letdown? And Tonawanda was Tonawanda was a pretty good team that year themselves. So um, the storyline kind of there was, you know, is North Tonawanda going to have a letdown? Is Tonawanda going to be their first loss? And Tonawanda gave them a battle. Tonawanda gave them a battle that most teams didn't that year. Even though North Tonawanda won like 35-20 on the scoreboard or something like that, it was still a very, very good game in that, you know. So, And then try, I'm trying to think of other storylines. But basically, you know, a lot of times when I covered him, it was just, you know, North Tonawanda was really, really up and Tonawanda was was down. But Tonawanda didn't compete any less than any other teams North Tonawanda was facing. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were beating Kenmore West and Lancaster and Jamestown and Orchard Park by the same scores they were beating Tonawanda in those years. In your opinion, does Kenmore East, Kenmore West rivalry, uh, is it on the same par as TNT? Yeah, in a way, yes, but in a way, I don't, I don't, it's a very, um, Kemmer West and Kemmer East have a very, very good rivalry in between. I, I don't think it's as intense in football as it is for, I, I just don't think it's as, it's as intense in football as a TNT game, if that makes any sense. And it's just a matter of, I mean, the North Tonawana Tonawana rivalry has gone on since what, 1900 or something like that, the first game. So it's just, gener- it's, it's just more and more and more generations of people that are, you know, that really, really care about the TNT football game. But it's just, it's still, it's still, excuse me, it's still one of the better rivalries in Western New York, Kenmore East versus Kenmore West. And they actually had a great game in 2001 where Kenmore East was about to make the playoffs and Kenmore West knocked them out. So they, they've they had some big games themselves. And it's not, you know, and don't forget also, Kenmore West and Kenmore East never really had a newspaper like the time. I mean, the Tonawana News covered Kemmer East and Kemmer West, but they didn't cover them like North Tonawana and Tonawana. So they didn't get as much, they, it hasn't gotten as much hype and as much pub. I would put it below TNT, but not too far below TNT. Going back to your writing career at the Tonawana News, um, what do you miss about uh, uh, not doing it anymore? The people. Uh, there were so many great people that I met in, in, in every single school. I, I, um, I'm trying to think just, to, I mean, so many people, so, uh, you know, North Tonawanda, obviously Tonawanda, Cardinal, O'Hara, Cardinal O'Hara, which probably, you know, people forget about O'Hara because they're, you know, they don't compete a lot. Well, their basketball teams have been great the past couple of years, guys and girls, but just really, really good people. And, you know, North Tonawanda always had a big budget and whatnot, but Cardinal O'Hara didn't. So they were putting together these sports programs at a shoestring budget and just to see how, how hard they worked at it. You know what I'm saying? Just to see how hard they worked to – Put, put it together. It, it made me more um, appreciative appreciative of the of the smaller schools. But I, I could name a trillion people that I I met that were awesome. Some I still keep in touch, and some I don't. The writers, you know, people like Tim Schmidt, Dave Ricky, who just retired, and that broke my heart. But you know, Pat Murray, Ken Fox, you know, so many writers. You know, the great Bill Wolcott, who when I first started in the business, um, the Nyer Gazette was a competitor of the Tonawana News. So him and I would go to different events together. And I would, the first thing I would do after I covered an event that he covered was I would go to the newspaper. I would, I would go by the Niagara Gazette and I would read what he wrote and make my, and see, see what he saw that I didn't, that make me a better writer. In your opinion, what's good about high school athletics today and, and what's not so good? Um, the parents, the not, the not so good. I think, I think that's it. that's just everywhere in the country in every sport, not just high school, little league and whatnot. Like the parents just need to calm down. Um, so many, I just read so many stories of coaches getting fired for nothing less than a bunch of parents banded together because their kid wasn't playing. And it just makes me sick to my stomach. Um, the best thing is there's so many people who are donating their time and a lot of coaches, they don't make a lot of money. It's like, they're not, they're not making money off coaching in high school sports. Their, their stipend is, 
comes out to like three dollars an hour a lot or something silly like that. So so many uh the best thing about high school sports is the people who are you know basically volunteering their time to help these kids help them develop. And for the kids it's great because they're I I think the greatest thing that I've ever done in my life is play team sports. I don't think I've learned anything in life um that's that's directed me to live a better life as a, an adult than playing in a team sport and learning how to be a teammate, learning how to you know pick people up and things like that. So I just think playing sports is the greatest thing someone can do as a kid and just to learn, you know, learn how to accept defeat, learn how to, you know, be a part of a team when you go from the best player on the team to like the worst player on the team, because you've moved up to fight your way back. And just, you know, these are things that happen in real life. I, I, I think high school sports, there's a place for it. There's a great place for it. And it just teaches so many life lessons that I, I, it's it's one of the best things that it's one of the best things in America. I truly believe that. Is specializing in one sport a good thing, or is it better off for, for a kid to have uh, be well-rounded and play in two or three different sports? Well, I'm going to defer to pretty much every single person in professional sports who said this, and every single person in professional sports has said, no, you should play multiple sports during high school, and you shouldn't have to specialize until you absolutely have to. And I, I agree 100%. Um, North Tonawanda, Ricky Brooks, he was a great baseball player, and they didn't want him to play hockey. And then he ended up playing football on top of playing hockey. Just his senior year, went out and played football. And he told me that he learned some things in football that helped him out with his baseball career. He made it all the way to AAA. I just think, I mean, they're kids. Let kids go out and have fun and play with their, you know, I, I never really talked to Ricky to why he played football. And he'll probably watch this and answer this. But I'm guessing he just wanted to go out and hang out with his friends. He was missing out. They were all, they're all going to football practice and he has to go home. And I just want, I mean, kids should have that ability. What, you know, they, kids, they want to hang out with their friends. Like they don't, they don't want to sit on the sideline. Anyone who's, you know, anybody who's competitive is competitive. So they want to play competitive sports all year round. And there's really, the only people that disagree with this are the leeches, like the AAU coaches and whatnot, who are making money off these kids. They're the ones that want them to specialize so they can make even more money off them. I'm a million percent in favor of not specializing until you absolutely have to. Are you, are you a turf guy or prefer? Natural grass. I prefer natural grass, but I get the turf, especially in the East Coast, because the turf, um, you can pretty much start playing as soon as it dries up, which could be, you know, it could snow one day and the next day it's dried up. Um, I definitely see the purpose for the turf. I prefer the grass, but the turf is probably where you need to go, and especially during the Northeast. During the, you know, when you can't get out, if, if you wait until the grass, sometimes you want to wait till you have to wait till May, you know, so it serves its purpose. Do you buy the notion that today's athletes are bigger, faster, stronger than the guys back from the the 90s, the 2000s, maybe the 80s as well? Some, yes. Um, I, I just think they prepare. And, here, and here's the re- I don't – are they bigger, faster, stronger? If they are, it's because they have more opportunities to. I mean, but you look at – there's there's one – so there's generational athletes in every single era that would have performed, you know, like Jim Brown would still be the best running back in the NFL. And, you know, Julius Irving would still be that dude who – who's just doing crazy dunks all over people. But in general, there's just more, the reason why they're not better, the reason why they're better athletes is they have the opportunity to become a better athletes because we take so much, you know, we have so much knowledge now on nutrition and fitness and exercise and that they didn't have back then. So are they bigger, faster, stronger? Maybe, but are they better? No, because if you would, if you would have given, you know, if you would have given the players from the 60s and 70s the same regiment, they'd be even better themselves, if that makes sense. If you could share with us, what's the funniest uh, thing that ever happened when you were a sports writer at the Tonawanda News that you can share with with us? Oh, goodness. Let me, can, can I consult my lawyer? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think the funniest thing. There were a lot of, there were a lot of funny moments. Um, there were, so probably the funniest that comes up to my head at first was North Tonawanda was playing at Clarence. And um, this was 2003. It was a sat, It was a Saturday game. It was senior day, and Clarence was not a very good football team that year. They 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 actually played North. They made the playoffs the year before. North Tonawanda beat them in North Tonawanda, but in 2003 they were not very good. And they were trying all these different plays, you know, gadget plays, and they were really trying hard, but they didn't stand a chance. And in the fourth quarter, like I'm just you know, and, and the game's over in the fourth quarter essentially. So I'm half paying attention, and all of a sudden you see everybody on the field back up. It was super funny. I'm like, what's going on? It turns out. Um, one of the kids from Clarence lost his lunch in the middle of the field, <laughs> right in the middle of the game. And it was in uh, 
So he that was kind of funny, and they didn't really know what to do. So they're kind of it was just super funny what they so they made like a five minute delay, and they, they didn't want to put their feet in the they didn't want to put their uh, foot in the hand and their, their foot in the ground or hand in the ground after that to get down in their three point stance for a running play or whatnot the linemen. So that was probably the funniest moment ever, and he was. And, you know, he was in good – everybody after the game was in good spirits about it. And uh, the coach had a funny comment. He goes – you know, and he and he was he said it serious, but he was kidding. He goes, I told my kids to, to leave it all on the field today and only one person listened to me. <laughs> so <laughs> so that, that was a pretty funny moment because it's just the kids were like, what do we do? You know, and even the referees didn't know what to do. Of all the sports that you covered at the Tonawana News, what was one of the saddest moments or, or disappointing moments that you that you can recall? I'm not, I'm not, um, on, on the field, probably, I'm not sure if it was sad, but it was just, um, on the field is probably when North Tonawana lost to Orchard Park in 2003, because they were the better team and they just, they did everything possible they could to lose and they still almost won. And I'm not sure that was disappointing to me. It was just, I was disappointed for them, you know, because that was such a good team and they worked so hard to, um, they worked so hard to. Um, remove themselves from the 2002 team that won the, the sectional title and to create their own identity. And they just came out and did not play a good game. And I, I just felt bad for them because I, you know, they, the best North Carolina team didn't show up that day. And then off the field, just hearing about people who passed away, like when Jason Drewski died, I was crushed. And, you know, hearing about Chris Lawson and Jordan Bunker and Brian Weech and all these people that were just great people that just died way, 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 way too young. What's the hardest game to cover? Is it a tight game? Or is it a blowout? Um, well, well, back then it's a tight game. Cause don't forget back then I like, there was no way of, you know, now I can go cover a game and I can shoot the story out from the, from the site and be fine. But back then, if the, it was a tight game, like you didn't, you couldn't start right. Like you literally could not start writing until you got back to the office. So the, just for deadline purposes, a tight game back then, but nowadays you can just, you know, I, in Vegas one time, my laptop, um, froze and I ended up, firing off a story um, on my iPhone. I literally just fired it off. Um, so it's just so easy to write a story nowadays. So back then it was a close game, but now it doesn't matter. When I was getting at the plot line, I mean, if you see, you're sitting oh. there, it's 54 to nothing in the third quarter and say, how, how, how do you make this interesting to my oh, readers? Oh, yeah. Oh, in terms of that, oh, I, oh, in terms of writing the story, the close game is always better, you know? It, it, it's hard, you know, talking about those, those Jancy teams, like every week, the same thing happened. They just steamrolled everybody. You know what I'm saying? They just beat that. So it's kind of difficult to find an angle. But the one thing I always try to do in a, in a blowout game is try to find one play that maybe someone else didn't see as to why the game got out of hand. It could have been like a third and six play where, you know, um, Chris Reimer brought a guy down one yard short and then they had the punt in North Carolina score or just something like that. I would much prefer to watch a close game and, you know, a close game that people are, you know, a lot of times during blowouts that people have shut their brains off, you know, like, and when you interview them after the game, they're not a great interview because they're pretty much, they're shut down. But when you talk to, you talk to someone after they scored the game winning goal, three, four minutes after they got everything to say, and you get so many great quotes, you know? So I, I prefer the close game. Absolutely. 1 million percent. For the timid players or the timid coaches, how, how would you, uh, what was your approach in trying to coax uh, uh, some quotes out of them and some comments out of them? Just honestly, it was just building trust. And I didn't really have that issue because a lot of a lot of coaches love talking about themselves. So um that but in terms of timid players and coaches, just um just kind of directing them to where you want to go. You know what I'm saying? Just like, hey, uh, what's going on? You know, um, what did you I, I saw that, you know, you just say like, so say a timid kid scores a touchdown and like, hey man, that was a great touchdown. What what did you see on that play? You know, and then they'll answer the question, even though they're timid or not, but they can, anybody can describe, you know what I'm saying? Can describe a play. If you had them describe a play, that's also a good quote, a good quote. Like, Hey, you know, I hit, I hit the line and I saw the free safety with training, you know, something like that. That's a good coach. Just, just, that's a good quote. So just anything you can to help them get a quote out of them. You know what I'm saying? Just do whatever you can. Lead, just lead the way if you can. How often did you get phone calls at the time? I wanted news from, uh, irate parents that you didn't uh, uh, give their kid enough publicity? Oh, a few times. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it was mostly the smaller sports. And when I was, when I was the editor, I'm like, I can't be everywhere. I'll, I try to make every team at least once during the regular season, but I can't, you know? So no, it, it's just one of those things where you can't please everybody and you, and you just have to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? So it, 
I don't one a month, maybe, you know, during, maybe during the, when the sports season's going on, maybe a little more, but yeah, it wasn't honestly my, my time with the parents for the most part was very, 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 very good. How difficult was it for you to train the coaches to call in with their scores? You know what? Um, that was kind of a thing that happened long before I started. So we never really had an issue with that. And then, you know, you just waited until a certain time. If they didn't call, you call them. So a lot of times they would, the coaches would hand it off to like their statistician or something like that. So they never really dealt with it. It, it was, you know, because the thing with the coaches is if they don't, if the game isn't in the paper, they're going to get crapped on more than the Tonawan news is. So if somebody, if you're a high school soccer coach and you forget to call the score in, and I'm going to tell the truth. Like if someone calls us, hey, how come you didn't get the North Tonawanda soccer score in? And I'd just be like, well, I'd never call me. Or no one from North Tonawanda soccer call me. So then they get the phone call from the parent and, you know, they're, they're not going to make the same mistake twice. We've talked about a, a, a lot of different things right now. What do you, would you like to talk about that I haven't brought up yet? I don't know. I think I think we've covered a lot. I, I just really, really, really enjoyed my time at the Tonawanda News and – I got to meet so many great people and I can't just, I can't emphasize that enough. And that's what I missed the most about it. Um, 99% of the time when you walked around the neighborhood, you know, when you walked into a store or something like that, the reaction was positive. And I can't, people still to this day will cite my articles and I can't believe that. I, I can't remember every article I wrote ever. And people are like, Oh, remember when you wrote that? And I'm like, vaguely, but just the fact that um, people still care about the Tonawana news and people have articles that I wrote like on their fridge still, it, it's crazy. And I, when Tim Dyrak, the coach of Cardinal O'Hara basketball, passed away a couple of years ago, unfortunately, I ha happened to be in town, so I went to his wake, and he had a bunch of articles. They had a bunch of articles about him, and I wrote most of them. And it's like you don't, you never really get to um, understand the impact of what you're doing until you you look back the other way after. You know what I'm saying? So, just to get people up to speed, I give you some time to talk about what Ernie Green's doing uh, in today's age in, in Arizona. Oh, goodness. Really? I'll, I'll do it quick. So my full-time job is I do sales and marketing for AFLAC. I just work with business owners and whatnot and show them what to do with, with our AFLAC programs. And I'm also, I still do part-time boxing writing and I do whatever, whatever they ask me to do for the Niagara Gazette. I still do a lot of stuff with them. And then um, I've been doing stand-up comedy for 11 years now, which has been a lot of fun. Um, at this point, my whole life is a comedy. So um, it's easy to write material. And then I, um, I do a podcast inside the distance with Ernie Green. It drops on Tuesday, all the major you know, podcasts, Apple, Spotify, all that stuff. And then what else do I do? I'm trying to think. I think I do one more thing that I forgot to talk about. And, and then, yeah, I host a uh, boxing Zoom chat every Friday. It's called, it's called The Chat. And anybody who's interested in boxing is welcome to join. We have um, boxers, promoters, writers, you know, managers, anyone who, who likes boxing comes and hangs out with us. It's always a great time. Ernie Green, this has been a lot of fun, my friend. It's good to catch up with you. Um... I'm glad you're here enjoying your time in the 716. I wish you the best of luck, and thank you so much for joining me today. Ed, thank you for having me. This has been an honor, and I uh, just want to say hi to all the NC people out there who are going to be watching. So thank you very much.